This video is sponsored by Scentbird. I know it may come as a surprise, but besides making videos, one of my favorite things to do is go out with friends and socialize in my spare time. In these past few months, I've been getting constant compliments from both my friends and strangers about how I smell. Although I haven't figured out what my favorite scent is yet, thanks to Scentbird, I feel like I'm very close to it. Scentbird is a monthly cologne and perfume subscription service I've already talked about before that carries all the top fragrance brands and delivers them right to your door for just $17 a month. Each fragrance comes in a unique bottle made to last you 30 days. Some of the scents I received this month are Cross River Gorilla by Sanctuary, Arrows Flame by Versace, and For Men Black Edition by Bentley. Each bottle comes with a card which explains what the fragrance smells like. For example, Cross River Gorilla has a scent that mixes the aromas of cardamom, green apple, violet leaf, and smoked leather, with people who bought it rating it as a refined, casual scent perfect for the fall season and just hanging out. You can always go on their website and take their quiz, which will tell you which scent is the best fragrance for you based on your lifestyle. The quiz takes less than a minute and will give you personalized results based on what you're looking for. If you're interested, scan my QR code and use Nightmare55 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. My parents own a vacation home in Quincy, California. It's a two-acre property surrounded by woods. We would go there as a family all the time when my siblings and I were kids. Now that we're all adults, we don't really have aligning schedules to go together as a family anymore. But when I was in the early stages of talking to my girlfriend Rose, I told her about our vacation home on like our fifth date. In October, the leaves begin transforming to create stunning natural beauty in Quincy. I teased the idea of us spending a weekend there together, and she right away said let's do it. Two days later, we were packing our things getting ready for the road trip to Quincy. I picked her up from her house, and off we went. The drive there was about five hours. We passed the time talking about everything in life, from TV shows to family to childhood memories, and then we listened to comedians and podcasts to pass some more time. When we finally made it to Quincy, we drove through the cute little village first because I wanted to show her how nice it was there. Ten minutes later, we were at the house. We have a little wooden fence at the driveway that we leave closed whenever the place would be vacant. It doesn't have a lock or anything, it's just a little deterrent for people to not enter the property while we're there. I got out of the car to open it, and then we drove past it onto the property. My dad has landscapers come every couple weeks in the summertime into the fall, so the property was very well kept when we were there. Rose was impressed. We were there just in time for lunch, so we unpacked, I gave her a tour, and then I turned the hot tub on so that the water would be hot enough for later. Then we went into town to go to one of my favorite spots to eat. When we finished up, we did a little sightseeing and went to the Plumas County Museum. After that, it was starting to get dark out, so we headed back to the house. We relaxed in the hot tub for a while. The hot tub was on the back deck under the awning. It was really cold out, but it felt nice in the hot tub, until we both could hear the crushing of leaves nearby, like footsteps. We thought it was a bear, so we both jumped out of the hot tub and ran into the house. I turned off all the lights inside and outside, thinking the lights could be attracting a bear or some wild animal. I peeked out one of the windows expecting to see a bear, but instead saw the silhouette of a human being walking along the side of the house. I ran to the back door to lock it and shut the blind on the back door window. I told Rose to be quiet. The footsteps circled the house until they got to the front door, then stopped. After a moment of silence, there was a knock at the door and someone yelled, it's the police. We were confused. I went to the front and said through the closed door, is there a problem? The person on the other side said we got a breaking and entering call. I asked how is that possible? The nearest neighbor isn't for a quarter mile. There was a noticeable gap in his response. He said I just need you to open the door sir. I responded sorry I don't feel comfortable doing that. I then thought to peep out the window and see if there's actually a cop car parked out front. I kinked the blind to the front just enough to see outside. It was twilight outside, dark but with enough brightness still to make out the property see no police cars out there. I said to Rose, I don't think that's a real cop. The man outside knocked on the door again. I said through the door, I don't see a cop car out there so I don't feel safe answering the door. The man didn't respond to anything to this. When there was another moment of silence, we thought he already walked away. A couple minutes passed and we were still in the living room talking to each other. Then heavy footsteps clomped away from the door. 
He'd been standing there still the whole time against our knowledge. I went over to peek out the window again, but I didn't see anyone. He must have walked off a different direction from the house. The scary thought was the house is surrounded by woods. He could come from literally any direction. We were definitely not going back outside again that night, besides me going outside real quick to turn off the bubbles in the hot tub. And from there, we stayed in the bedroom watching movies and eventually went to sleep. I kept my dad's shotgun from the closet under the bed. The next day, we went hiking in Pluma's National Forest. Then we went out to eat, and then we went to see a movie at the nearby theater. When we got back to the house, it was getting dark out. We pulled onto the property, and Rose screamed, Oh my God! And I damn near swerved the car thinking I was about to hit something. I slammed on the brakes and said, What? She pointed at someone, quickly walking away from the house towards the woods until they disappeared into the darkness. I tried to keep Rose calm when she started freaking out that someone's stalking us. I told her it's fine, we have a gun, and we're leaving tomorrow morning anyway. I was kind of scared too, though. I pulled the car as close as possible to the house, then we quickly went inside. I did a quick run around of the house, making sure every door and window was locked. We didn't go outside again that night. We packed our things to be ready in the morning, and then went to the bedroom for the rest of the night. After watching a movie, we went to sleep. Around that time, I started hearing this weird scraping sound coming from outside. It happened every few seconds, and then it would stop for a few seconds. I couldn't make out what it was, but something was going on out there. I feared that person may have came back. I waited until the noises stopped completely, before quietly getting out of bed to not wake up Rose. I walked to the window, kinked the blinds just a bit, and found myself face to face with a man on the other side of the window trying to look in. He definitely saw me. I fell backwards and screamed, Jesus Christ. Rose woke up. I didn't say anything though, I grabbed the shotgun from under the bed and made sure it was loaded before running out the back door and shooting it into the air while screaming like a madman trying to scare off that man and whoever else could have been out there. I think I fired three shells into the air before going back inside. Then I explained to Rose what happened. In a strange way, I felt a nice adrenaline rush after going outside and doing that. Maybe that was partly why I felt so confident that whoever was outside wasn't coming back. The adrenaline eventually wore off. And when we were back in bed, I was scared once again of hearing any kinds of sounds from outside. We made it through the night, and the next morning I did call the police just to file a report on the whole thing. My family and I have been back there a few times since this story, and thankfully that guy never came back. At least while we were there. I was driving through Colorado in the middle of the night. I was in Tabernash at this point, and it must have been like 1 a.m. I stopped to get some gas and grab a snack at a gas station. After that, I got straight back on the road. Though there weren't any cars on the road at this hour, especially not the roads I was on, I still obeyed the speed limit because it was late, I was tired, and you never know where a cop could be hiding. I was going around 55 on this winding road, and all of a sudden, that dreaded flashing of lights appeared in my rearview mirror. I looked in my mirror and saw the car behind me with the flashing white and red lights. So I pulled over, but not before looking at my speed and confirming that I was only going maybe 2 miles per hour over the speed limit. I pulled onto the side of the road, and so did the vehicle behind me. I was beyond annoyed. I'd never been pulled over before at the time, and I'm always a cautious and careful driver. I immediately felt like I was being pulled over unlawfully. As the officer stepped up to my car, I lowered the window, and he greeted me, asking for my license and registration. I tried to act like I know my rights and would not just bend over backwards for him. So I asked, is there a reason you pulled me over? He said he'll get to that in a minute. I told him I know I wasn't speeding or swerving and none of my taillights are out, so I don't want to hand you my license if this is an unlawful stop. Then I took a look at his uniform. It looked off. He was in all black with a black vest on that resembled a police vest, but his vest didn't say police anywhere on it. His badge didn't say police either. It said criminal task force. He kept insisting for my license and registration, and I actually just flat out asked him, are you an actual cop? He replied, I'm part of the undercover unit. Then he asked for my license again. I asked him for his badge number. He said he didn't have to give that to me. I knew enough about traffic stops to know that was a lie. I also took note that his lights were only red and white, lacking blue. 
I wasn't 100% sure if this could be an indicator of a fake police officer, but along with everything else, it only made it more suspicious. The man started asking me to get out of the car. I said, respectfully, I'm not comfortable talking to you until you can get a supervisor here. He raised the volume of his voice and his tone got more assertive as he repeated for me to get out of the car. I replied, I don't think you're a real cop. If you are, you wouldn't have a problem getting your supervisor here. I rolled up the window a bit and he didn't like this. He yelled at me to open the door as he put his hands on my window and tried unlocking the door. I pushed his hands off as I started the car and put it in drive. I heard him shout stop as I started flooring it away from him. My heart was racing and by God, I was hoping I was right or I was going to jail. But at the same time, hoping I was right that this man was impersonating a cop showed just how terrifying of a situation I was in. As I was driving away, going the speed limit, I saw the car behind me with the lights on fast approaching. I did the only thing I could think to do, and that was to call 911. I told her on the phone that I was being chased by someone who I believed to be a fake cop. I said he refused to give his badge number, his car was unmarked and didn't have blue lights, and his uniform didn't say police. After asking my location and more details on the situation, I told her that I was being chased by this person. The woman told me the nearest police station for my location, which was the Fraser Winter Park Police Department. She requested I go there, and she would be dispatching an officer to meet me there. The guy in his car was following me halfway to my destination with his lights still on, but suddenly when we got to an intersection, he turned his lights off and turned right, driving off out of view. He was gone. And with that, I realized that my suspicion was true the whole time. I was pulled over by a guy pretending to be a cop. I still drove to the police station, where there was a cop sitting in his car in the parking lot. I pulled in and he got out, seemingly knowing it was me that he was meeting right away. From there, I told him every last detail of the encounter, the guy's face, his car, and what intersection he turned right at. He took down my contact information, I'm guessing in case I'd need to be called in to identify the guy. After a few minutes, I was on my way. I'm glad I trusted my intuition and didn't get out of the car. I could only imagine where things would have went from there. I'm 29 years old. I live alone in my house in a small town in Michigan on the weekends. I come here to escape from the city lifestyle that I spent most of my life growing up in and am sick of. I like being in a quiet, rural area, but my house and property is the kind of place horror movies are usually set. A house with a big property and the neighbors not right on top of you. You don't hear of too much crime usually in my town, but that's because the population is relatively low. I don't have a lot of friends in the area, but that's not why I come here anyway. I come to be alone and escape my stresses from work and people in general during the week. One Friday, shortly after arriving at the house after my drive, I got a knock at the door. I opened it to a guy with a clipboard. Immediately, I knew he was selling something. He asked me if I was content with my security system. I said I don't have one, but I'm not really interested, and I made a joke that no one's breaking into this ugly house. He then went on his pitch, telling of all the recent break-ins in the area that, quite honestly, I had not heard about. He then asked who I live with and I said I live alone, so I don't really need it. He was persistent though. He asked me to at least give him my phone number and he'd circle back in a couple of weeks to see how I'm feeling. He offered to waive the installation fee. On the spot, I figured why not, that actually sounded pretty good. So I gave him my number. He thanked me and left. After that, I went to the kitchen to start making dinner and then I resumed watching Yellowstone in the living room. I was on a binge, so I was watching episode after episode for hours on the couch. It was at about 11 o'clock at night that there was a knock at the door. 11 o'clock at night is beyond the appropriate hour to knock on anyone's door, especially around here. I'm not super close with the neighbors, so I wouldn't assume it to be one of them. I ignored the knocking and kept watching my show. The knocks persisted though. I still didn't get up. I wasn't answering the door at 11 p.m., no way. I stayed seated, but when there was a third set of knocks at the door, I grew concerned. They weren't leaving. I went to the door to ask who's there. There wasn't a reply from the other side. This is exactly how a horror movie would start out. I wasn't going to open the door to find out who was on the other side. I said through the door, I'm not interested in whatever you're selling me. 
I have a gun that I'm not afraid to use. I don't actually have a gun, but it's an easy enough threat to get someone to go away. I thought that did the trick because the knock stopped. I went back to the couch. Then, someone started calling my cell phone. The caller ID said 911 emergency services. I'd never received a call from 911 in my life, and I didn't even think that was a thing. I always thought that if the police called you, it would say no caller ID or something. I picked up the phone, and a man on the other line asked, is this George? To which I said yes. He said, this is the police department. We have officers outside your house right now. There's been a report of a crime on your block, and we have some questions to ask you. This didn't feel right at all. I asked the alleged 911 operator to ask the police to go to the window so I could identify them before opening the door. He said he can't do that, they're already outside my house, which made no sense. I said, I don't answer questions, sorry, and hung up the phone. Even if it were the real police, I had no legal obligation to answer the door anyway. But this was screaming trap in every sense of the word. They tried calling me again with the same number. I denied it and put my phone on do not disturb. I actually decided to call 911 and ask if these calls are legitimate, and right away, the 911 operator said it's absolutely not real, and coupled with the fact that someone was at my door, they advised I lock all the doors, grab something I could use as a weapon, and wait inside until a police officer arrives at my house. While I was on the phone with her, I heard the back door knob being shimmied with, and someone trying to push the door open. I then apparently tried ramming or kicking the door down because there were these super loud bangs on the back door. I told the operator this, and she said the police will be here in less than 10 minutes. I needed them now though. I went to the door and screamed, do you want to get blown up? And there was a yell on the other side, saying it's the police, open up, followed by another ram or kick into the door. The back door is next to a window, unlike the front door. So I looked out the window, and I saw two masked men attempting to kick down my door. When I say mask, I mean they had these disturbing looking sacks on their heads. It looked like they had eye and mouth holes cut out. They saw me looking through the window, and I guess they saw me on the phone. They must have realized I was on the phone with the actual police, and they took off into the darkness. About five minutes later, there was a knock on the door from the actual police. I let them in. One of the cops was very helpful, and he went as far as to search my entire property. The two cop cars out front with their lights on for half an hour was surely a deterrent for anyone to come back to the house. After the cops left, I noticed one of the cop cars stayed in front of my house for hours. I'm sure they left at some point in the night. I'm done opening the door to anyone unannounced though, because I'm 99% sure that guy who was claiming to sell security systems was just scoping out the best house to target, and him and his squad were spoofing 911 calls to get people to open the door late at night. I went to my closest neighbors to ask them if the guy knocked on their doors too. They said no. For some reason, my house was the only one on this street targeted for this. I guess I was the first house they tried, and I seemed like an easy target. 